Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. A revolutionary vehicle in its time, the Landing Craft Air Cushion, better known as LCAC, started developing during the 1970s. With a few early prototypes, the first LCAC was delivered to the Navy in 1984. And initial operational capability was achieved in 1986. Since then, a total of 91 LCACs have been created by Textron Marine and Avondale Gulfport Marine. The last one was delivered to the U.S. Navy in 2001. However, a total of 68 LCACs have undergone service life extension. This hovercraft is widely used by the military because it can carry a 60 to 75 ton payload, including weapon systems, equipment, cargo, and personnel from ship to shore. The way it works is similar to other hovercraft vehicles, where it's propelled by four gas turbines connected to four centrifugal lift fans and two thrust fans. This is the secret that makes it operate in both land and sea environments and be able to clear four-foot obstacles. And to keep it running swiftly, the craft needs a crew of five sailors, including a craft master, navigator, craft engineer, deck engineer, and loadmaster. The unique features of the LCAC allow it to be used for amphibious assault missions, improving the efficiency of the military. During this kind of mission, which include the WASP-class amphibious assault ship like the USS Essex or USS Kearsarge. A well deck is an open area on the deck of the amphibious assault ship. This area can be flooded with seawater and create a pool for the hovercraft to launch or dock. To be able to be launched, the pool must have at least 5 inches of depth, and then the air cushion inflates, lifting the LCAC, which steers out of the well deck with its thrusters. The technology of the hovercraft makes unloading happen quickly and efficiently, reducing the LCAC's exposure to any threats on the beach during missions. During the unloading, vehicles and equipment drive or are driven off the LCAC onto the beach using its ramp, giving the craft strategic and tactical value. Although the LCAC has a life extension program of about 10 years, this time has allowed the development of the UHAC that will replace the LCAC. These vehicles are designed uh, with flat bottoms, so they get as close to where we're going to be assaulting as possible. That does also make it slightly unstable when you're in the water 
but uh, when you hit the beach, uh, it pays dividends. Considering that there are areas that the LCAC cannot reach, a new project was funded and carried out by the Office of Naval Research. Such a project consisted of developing an amphibious transport system capable of being launched from ordinary container ships to shore without using a harbor. This resulted in the Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector, or UHAC, a concept and development with low ground pressure that is able to go through various terrains. During RIMPAC 2014, an advanced warfighting experiment featured a half-scale prototype sponsored by the Marine Corps' Warfighting Lab. The goal of the Marine Corps Lab was to assist with the development of the UHAC technology, evaluating its potential for diverse missions beyond traditional amphibious assault. Captive air cells within foam paddles are the secret behind this vehicle, which allows it to propel itself through the water at up to 20 knots. These enclosed cells are flexible structure, filled with compressed air held at a specific pressure to contribute to buoyancy and overall performance. With this process, the UHAC's weight is distributed over a larger area, so the vehicle can cross through various terrains, including soft sand and uneven surfaces without getting stuck. Also, each cell can be filled with air individually, which helps the crew enhance the maneuverability and navigation control of the transport. And this technology is simple enough to make the cells easier to maintain, reducing downtime and costs. Showcasing the UHAC during RIMPAC lets people know that this new technology is being developed. Its potential was featured during the ship to shore tests where the UHAC navigated from the ship to the beach using its paddle system, demonstrating its ability to travel through water and over obstacles. Here, the concept demonstrator is a 410 scale prototype, sizing 42 feet long, 26 feet wide, and 18 feet tall. The full-sized UHAC is projected to be 84 feet long and up to 34 feet high. It will also be capable of carrying up to 190 tons of cargo. This demonstration at RIMPAC and other tests provided valuable data on the vehicle's performance in realistic conditions, which allows further development and refinement. Its successful loading and unloading capabilities showed its potential to carry important cargo. However, there are still some challenges that must be overcome, such as the scaling up of the craft or how the UHAC should handle weight distribution. So what that allows it to do is to cross terrain that you wouldn't normally be able to get uh, traditional or, or existing vehicles such as an LCAC across. So we're using this vehicle as a demonstrator, as a potential future connector uh, that could allow us to come into areas that are unprepared uh, in the future of the Marine Corps. 
Air cushion vehicles have been a widely used form of transport in the British Isles. Considering that the very first hovercraft design came from a British invention in the 1950s. In fact, the name hovercraft was a trademark owned by Saunders Row, the first company to use these vehicles for transport. Today, several British companies are still leading manufacturers of hovercrafts, particularly for recreational and light commercial use. This is the case for the company Hover Travel, which uses two Griffin 12,000 TD vehicles, which operate a ferry route between mainland UK to the Isle of Wight crossing the Solent Strait. The principle behind this type of craft works the same as its military counterparts, where they use blowers that create a volume or cushion of air below the craft. The air is trapped by the flexible skirt that surrounds the base of the vehicle, preventing the pressure from going down. This lifts the vehicle, which is later driven by the propellers and controlled using control vanes that work like the rudders of a ship. Usually, this is powered using one or more engines, with one in charge specifically of the lifting fan. This technology is visible with the Hovercraft 12000 TD, which operated from 2020 to late 22 as the Solent Flyer by the company Hover Travel. It provided passenger services between Portsmouth and the Isle of Wight in the UK. Normally, the company offered crossings between Portsmouth Harbour and Ride Pier Head, and their schedule frequency changed depending on the season, with multiple daily sailings during peak periods typically from April to October. During those times, the Solent Flyer could carry up to 80 passengers, leaving space to make the ride comfortable and including services like toilets, refreshments, and luggage storage. The performance of the hovercraft made the journey time around 25 to 30 minutes, which is significantly faster than traditional ferries. runs from early morning till the evening and caters for commuters and tourists alike. Um, we have an engineering department that um, is always on site 365 days a year and is always available to maintain the craft. The newest technology and production quality improvements have given the 12,000 TD advantages of low running and maintenance costs. This maintenance process begins with its double engine system, comprised of two MAN 12-cylinder engines. Then, the flexible skirt beneath the craft is inspected for any kind of damage, wear, and proper inflation. If necessary, repairs or replacements are done to maintain optimal performance and air cushion integrity. More of these routine inspections may include the electrical and navigation systems to ensure the communication works properly. Safety equipment like rafts or fire extinguishers require regular examinations to comply with the regulations and ensure passenger safety. Finally, if there is a specific issue like hull damage or control errors, the maintenance team works on that locally and quickly. They'll be checking for um, any uh, fluids, oils, making sure the fuel is uh, all up together, making sure the ballast system's okay. The craft itself runs on two engines, uh, port and starboard side. 
uh, and it has a lift system as well, port and starboard side, uh, so they need to be checking the grease levels, everything like that. Air cushion vehicle technology and new developments like captive air cells have shown their potential to offer unique advantages for defense and commercial use. For the common people, moving between places is an easier and more affordable solution, which can increase tourism and cargo delivery. The military can take advantage of their versatility and capability of crossing troops and weapons through diverse terrain. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.